Welcome everyone. My name is Jeff Sloss. I'm the Controls Marketing Manager at Zoller. Uh, thanks for joining us for the second webinar in our series on our pivot control panels. If you're unable to watch the first webinar, it's called Pivot Panel Overview, and you can see that recording on the uh, on our Zoller YouTube channel. Um, again, my name is Jeff Sloss. I came here specifically to, to work with the electronics development that uh, Zoller very much wanted to do. We started with um, battery backups and high water alarms, and we've worked our way up to control panels. And so Pivot is the is, a, is probably the biggest project that we've done, at least related to electronics. And uh, it's a pretty amazing product, and that's what we're here to talk about. Um, before I came to Zoller, I was in the Chicago area. I, I ran a, um, a sales and uh, service pump company in the suburbs of Chicago. I did that for about 16 years. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So why did why did Zoller decide to do the pivot the whole pivot program to begin with? Um, the benefit to all you guys in the, at the end of the day is that it's way fewer panels. You know we're, we took all the options that all the all the items that used to be options on the old panels and we we made them standard features. That bottom line that's the biggest single thing about pivot. Uh, that makes it different and stand out from uh, previous panels and competitor panels. By making those options into standard features, you're reducing all the, the variability that comes with, with panels. So what used to take 3,600 panels to cover our, our whole line of pumps and all the variability within the pumps, now we can do that with about 200 item numbers. Actually, it's less than 200. It's probably, I think by the time we're done, it's 165 different panels. The other thing is pivot panels are smart. We're, you know, instead of being a source of frustration, we want them to be a source of information. We, uh, you know, it's going to be able to tell you diagnostics and information and point you directly at what may be a problem that it that it's detected and doesn't like. And we hope that becomes a helpful thing to have a source of information out of your panel. We were able to keep the the price competitive. Of course, it wouldn't have done any good to have all these improvements to panels, but yet, and then they then they're twice as much money. So, you know, the, we had to be able to do this at a competitive price. And for the most part, the panels are really about the same price as the panels they replace. There's a few that are a little bit more, and a few that are less, but overall despite having more features and more value, you're, you're getting it for the same price. And the, the size, the compact design of the panels themselves, um, they're, they're small enough to fit into tighter spaces. A lot of times these are going in small storage rooms or um, outside on a wall or whatever, um, but yet they're big enough the way that the panels are laid out where you can get your hands in there and do the initial field wiring. So today what we're going to cover, I'm going to do a quick review of the Pivot Basics, Pivot versus Pivot Pro versus Pivot Pro Plus. And then we're going to talk about a bunch of things here that I have listed out, um, kind of advanced Pivot functionality. Then we'll look at some Z-Control related um, screens, and I'll actually, we'll go online and look at my account and the kinds of things that you can see on Pivot when you put a Pivot online. And then we'll do some uh, wrap ups at the end there. So by way of reminder and refresher, a couple slides here about Pivot versus Pivot Pro. Pivot is uh, single phase only. Yes, you can get simplex and duplex, but it's single phase only. When you go to Pivot Pro, you can get single phase or three phase. You have the added convenience of, a, of an LCD menu you can see it there on the right with the buttons below it, the four buttons below it. There's a longer list of standard features, things like seal fails and thermals. There's a jack so that you can buy a, a, a Wi-Fi gateway and connect that to Z-Control. And it's much easier to do setting changes 
because you've got that menu or alternatively, you've got the online cloud interface to make changes. And you can also use the USB as opposed to the pivot where you can only use the USB and there's some jumper pins on the circuit board that you can use as well. We're gonna cover that a little bit more in just a minute here. This is the controls model numbering guide. I point this out because these part numbers have become somewhat logical. Uh, it's a, it's a, the, the way the number format for pivot, it's five digits, a dash, and then four digits. So you can see, and this is an FM available to all you guys, FM 3297. And you can see what each of those five digits in front of the dash refers to. It's the kind of product and then a, a, a little bit of a description of that product, the electrical characteristic of that product, the current, or well, I should say voltage and phase. And then the fourth digit is the amps and the fifth digit is the uh, type of enclosure. Okay, let me uh, switch over to a video feed here. I've taken the door off of the Pivot Pro. So here's the door. And by the way, those just for convenience so that you know, those do pop off fairly easy. And then to get them on, you just kind of hook it back in and, and fold it back and it'll pop right back on its hinge. Makes it convenient if um, while you're doing your setup. But just, to, just in, as an example, there's the part number for this Pivot. And you can see the, the Z control ID or device ID, and you can also see the QR code here. So I just want to show you that that door had been removed just so that we can see the, the panel a little bit more easily. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover some advanced features that we've never really talked about on a video or anything before. But before we do that, I wanna cover two, probably the two most important features about Pivot. Um, and we've covered them before, but just by way of quick review, one is that these smart HOAs, we put these in here to help the installer. And by that, I mean, you've got your regular handoff auto. That's what an HOA stands for, right? H, uh, handoff and auto. Right now, I don't know if you can see the green LED, but they're both in auto. When somebody puts up an HOA in hand, that means the pump is gonna be running. What Pivot does is it that puts it on a timer. Uh, the default is for five minutes, pump runs for five minutes. If you haven't turned it off by then, it'll turn off by itself and go back to auto. That's to protect the technician from um, forgetting. The other is the off, where by default, after four hours, if you have it in off, it'll, it'll create an alarm. Now, it's not gonna put it back into auto for safety reasons. It's gonna keep it in off, but at least you're going to get an alarm after four hours that, you know, just in case somebody forgot. Our, our calculation was that a technician is going to prefer a call from a property owner saying, hey, this thing's an alarm, only to find out that he forgot to put it back into auto. He's going to prefer that phone call over the, hey, I'm getting a high water alarm and everything is backed up phone call. So that's that's one of the features that we think is the most important on on the panels and the other is the smart float logic so we've set up the floats and we're not going to go through this all there's another video that, that does do that but if you've got a float that, that quits working on the old panels that was uh, pretty detrimental because it might mean that no pumps turn on with the pivot we've very much prioritized running the pumps and you're going to have a pump turn on if at least one of the float switches can come up. So that's a big improvement. I know it sounds pretty basic to have a, a pump turn on when the float comes up, but on old panels, that wasn't the case. If uh, your stop float never came up, nope, it, the pumps wouldn't turn on. And the, the, the only time, the first time you would know that a stop float was broken was when the high water float came in and you had an alarm. Okay, so that's the review. Um, let's go over a couple, I guess you could say advanced features. I don't know if you can actually see this screen or not, but there's two lines of text. And over on the right here, there's a three and a two. That's the number of cycles. So the pump one has three cycles, pump two has two cycles. And there's an A in the second row. That just means that the, the next pump to run is the second pump. 
So I'm going to start pushing buttons here on the on the menu just to to demonstrate uh, what a couple of the more detailed things that we're going to look at. So I'm going to go down uh, and go to let's go to continuous run. So it says continuous run 20 minutes. The default is 20 minutes. All continuous run is either pump hits that 20 minute continuous run cycle, you're going to get an alarm. It is not going to turn the pump off. It's just going to give you an alarm. We aren't going to we aren't going to turn a pump off. The only time we're ever turning a pump off is when we're in hand on a timer and we put it back to auto. That's the only time we turn a pump off. If floats are up, whether we hit a continuous run alarm or anything else, we're not going to turn the pumps off. That that would be a a pretty risky proposition. So, but you are going to get an alarm. All of these kinds of timers and meters and settings are, are very changeable. And I'm just gonna demonstrate that right now. So 20 minutes, let's say I have a, a, a pump that typically will run for five minutes. Well, let, let's make it easier, uh, 10 minutes. So what I wanna do, and my, my screen just timed out here, so I'm gonna go back to continuous run. Let's say I have a pump that runs a normal cycle for 10 minutes. So I actually want to change my continuous run from 20 to 12 minutes, let's say, because I, you know, okay, it goes an extra two minutes. I want to know about it. I'm going to hold back and enter together. I get a little asterisk right here that shows up next to continuous run. And now I, I know I can edit. And I'm just going to hit my down arrow until I get to 12. Now I'm at 12 and I hit enter. And now my continuous run timer will go off after a pump runs continuously for 12 minutes. So all of these things are very settable, they're easy, and you probably only have to do them once, or the technician, the, whoever's uh, starting up the panel only has to do it once usually. Uh, the next thing that I would mention, I think is right next to it here. I think it's, there we go, seal fail. So you guys know that you can have a moisture sensor built into a pump and when you do that the, the option i think is usually called seal fail at least it is on the panel there's an extra pair of wires that then comes into the panel and those paint those wires will land land here and we'll talk about that in a second but what that feature does is if the moisture sensor is triggered and the seal fail alarm occurs you're going to get the horn and the globe going but nothing really happens any different and maybe that's okay for your application but what we added here that's a little different, um, not a little different, I don't think anybody's done it before, is we've added, by default, the behavior is that regular alternating or cycling of the pump continues. But what you're able to do is change this. It says no cutout. You're able to change that by holding the buttons, waiting for that asterisk, going down, and then hitting enter. Now it says seal fail cutout instead of no cutout. And all that means is if a pump gets a seal fail alarm, take that pump out of the alternating. You'll, so if there's a, a duplex system, pump two, seal fail goes bad. Um, by, by choosing that as your, as your seal fail setting, you're saying only run the pump that doesn't have a seal fail. Now, if by chance the other pump had a seal fail alarm as well, then it goes back to regular alternating. All right, my screen timed out, back to the back to the uh, home screen again. And uh, let's point out uh, another thing here called lead lag. We all know what simplex running is for, from a simplex panel. On a duplex panel, you can choose a couple different modes. You can choose simplex because maybe one of your pumps is not installed yet or one goes bad or whatever the case is. You, you put it in simplex mode, it's only gonna run one pump. You can have alternating mode and duplex mode. Now those sound the same, but alternating mode will only ever alternate pumps. Duplex, if there's a lag float switch, can run them at the same time, simultaneous run. So alternating does not have simultaneous run. Duplex can have simultaneous run if you have a lag float come up. Now there's another mode that people in the, with old, older panels, you would buy an option called a lead lag selector switch. That's what it was called on our options list. Well, with Pivot, we've just built it into uh, the firmware. So what people would do is they would have uh, a sec uh, two pumps, 
and then they'd want the lead pump to be the one that runs all the time. And the lag pump pump was not in an alternating um, setup. It was only going to come on if the lag pump lag float switch came up. And that's fine. There's uh, groundwater situations where you might want that kind of setup. But the inherent problem with a lead lag setup is that the lag pump sits dormant. It never runs. We all know that's not necessarily good for a pump. So what this does, it allows you to assign a ratio. So you've got a colon here right in the middle and you've got a one and a one. So right now it's basically just alternating one to one. You can set this alternating or lead lag to whatever ratio you want. So if I wanted um, to set up a lead pump, pump one, let's say, runs all the time, but I still want pump two to have a, a, an exercise cycle, I might set that ratio to 99 to one or something like that. But it can be any numbers you want. It could be 50 to 10 or five. I guess that would be the same as five to one, really, from a proportion standpoint. So, um, so lead lag, that's, that's another, we think we've made the whole lead lag idea a lot more friendly and taken away that dormant pump problem that was inherent. Now, you might go through this and start making a bunch of changes and kind of forget what you did or not like a change, but can't remember how to set it, change it back. One of the things you can do is you can go to, uh, I think it's the third, yeah, the third one, if you're, if you're hitting up from the main screen, there's a factory reset. If I hit enter and then choose yes, it'll just reset all the defaults, all the factory defaults back to, back to what they came as. So that's a good way to kind of start over, start fresh. So the next thing uh, we could talk about is a little bit of, of wiring. I'm going to turn that hopefully that's a an angle you can see a little bit better into the panel what we have here back in the background there's three float switches and those three cords are these three right here and those are landing on our terminal board right there now we have we have the positions for four floats stop lead lag and high but you notice we've only got three coming in that's our recommended setup we're going to include this jumper right here between lag and high on every panel, on every duplex panel. And so you notice that, if you can see it, the stop is hooked up to stop, lead to lead, and then the third float, we have it hooked up to high here, but it doesn't matter if it's hooked up to lag or high because you have the jumper. Now, if for some reason you needed to use a fourth float, you would wire in all four of your floats and you'd just pull that jumper out. Our, our recommendation is that you use three floats for the for the vast majority of applications you're going to want to use the stop lead high lag float order on a four float and if you're doing that you might as well just use three floats i think most of you know that and most of you are doing that these days but it it didn't used to be the way it was and people would use four floats and they'd set it up as stop lead lag high which again not in every every application, but in most applications, that's a bad idea. Stop lead lag high means that you are not gonna get a high water alarm until both pumps are having issues or both pumps aren't keeping up or both pumps are uh, have failed. So if you have that high in between your lead and lag, you're gonna get the alarm when one pump has gone down versus when two pumps have gone down. <clears throat> so that that's just a little bit about the wiring. There's a couple other jumpers in here um, you're going to notice that there's jumpers, right? The, the, these two red jumpers, if you can see them, are on my thermal inputs. So if I've got a pump that has thermal wires coming out of the pump up, up the cord, I can bring those thermal wires right into those terminals and just remove that jumper. But if you're not using a pump that has thermal wires coming in, then you leave the jumper in place uh, just to keep that circuit closed. The other terminals right next to it are the seal fail wires. <clears throat> when I bring in my, my two wires from my moisture sensor and land them on my seal fail, I'm gonna use my little adjuster screw, uh, screwdriver, a, a Phillips screwdriver, and in the seal fail, there's holes right here. Those are holes. And there's a Phillips screwdriver 
uh, Phillips screw head in there. I reach it with a small jeweler's type screwdriver. I, I turn it clockwise until I get an alarm and then I just back it off a little bit. And now my seal fail uh, adjuster screw is set. You might notice if you're able to see down at the bottom, there's also a jumper, a red jumper. That jumper is to jumper the alarm power to the control power. Both have to be powered or the panel's gonna be, well, if the control circuit isn't powered, it's gonna be dead. And if the alarm circuit isn't powered, you're gonna have kind of the interface is gonna go, uh, it's gonna light up a bunch of LEDs and the alarm's gonna be sounding. So both of those circuits have to be powered uh, on a three-phase panel. It's perfectly acceptable. In fact, it comes from the factory with the jumper between the two. So that, that's what that jumper is for. So configuring a Pivot Pro is much simpler than on a Pivot, I would say, because you have a menu and the four buttons that we've kind of demonstrated briefly how to go through that. That makes it very convenient to, to access and change all the settings and see uh, data that the panel might have stored. The other way to see and change data on a Pivot Pro is on the cloud. So this cable right here, this green cable is connected to my Wi-Fi gateway. And in the cloud, if I look at my Pivot Pro interface for this panel, I'm going to be able to change a bunch of things and steal, see a lot, a lot of stats, a lot more than I can see on the menu, by the way. We're going to look at that screen in a minute. That's the other way to configure settings with a Pivot Pro. You can't do that with a Pivot, remember, because it doesn't have a jack for the Wi-Fi gateway. And then the third way on a Pivot Pro is with the USB jack. Now, uh, in order to use that, you would follow the directions in the instructions that are on page like 10 and 11, maybe even 12. And those are gonna give you a bunch of instructions on how to use a thumb drive with that USB. And there's a couple of different things you can do there. You can use it to configure settings. You can use it to pull the, the data off the panel, such as um, uh, cycle counts and elapsed time. And you can also, if we ever had a firmware update for the panels, that's what you would use to accomplish a firmware update. So there's there's a lot of talk about that in the in page 10 and 11 and 12 inside the instructions. So I'm not going to read those to you, but but it's pretty um, it's pretty simple. It's not that difficult to do. So those are the three ways with Pivot Pro to conf make configuration changes with a pivot. You don't have the cloud and you don't have the screen, but you do have the USB, so you can make changes that way. And you also, back there on the circuit board, on a pivot, you have five pins. Don't look for those five pins on a Pivot Pro, they aren't there, just on a pivot. And those five pins correspond to, pin number one is float logic type, smarter relay. Pin two is the continuous run timeout, whether or not it's enabled or disabled. Pin three is the HOA hand and service off timeouts. You can enable and disable. Pin four is the globe mode, whether it's alarm based or solid. And pin five is that float order, SLLH or SLHL. So by pulling the pin on or off, and you can look in the owner's manual in the instructions on page nine and 10, it, it tells you what pulling the jumper off of each of those pins does. So that's configuring. I am going to go back to my, to my uh, computer screen in just a second and talk about Z-Control. Uh, but before I do that, this is a Z-Control gateway or, or Wi-Fi gateway as we call it. Part number is 90002-0001. And in the box that the gateway comes with, there's a the green cable. It's it's a short cable. It's only, I think it's like three feet long. And there's a little piece of Velcro that you can um, use to stick it to the, to the door. Now, sticking it to the door, and just plugging it in with the short cable is great. That's the easiest way to set up a Wi-Fi gateway. But what that requires is that this panel lives in a spot that has a Wi-Fi signal. If it doesn't live in a spot 
that has a Wi-Fi signal, you're going to need a much longer cord than this probably and and put that Wi-Fi gateway back there wherever there is a Wi-Fi signal. And that may mean running it all the way in, into the inside of a building if this panel's sitting outside. Okay, I'm going to switch back. Okay, so this is what my account looks like. <clears throat> I've got a lot of stuff in here. Most, a lot of it is just test things, but if you've never seen this before, when you create a free account on Z Control, the data and the and the features that are available on the cloud, we, we do not charge for them. We're going to eventually offer a, a premium level. This is all free, what you're seeing. So if I look at my test equipment, um, this right here, Video Room Gateway, let's see, Video Room Pivot Pro. So if I open that device, I'm going to see a bunch of data here. On the left, I'm going to see uh, my stats for uh, my pumps and which one's next to run. You can see that right here. Whoops. It says pretty clearly which one's next to run, which one's ready. I'm going to see the stat, the what state my HOAs are in. See, they're in auto. Uh, I can I can see my my switch inputs. And then over here, and I apologize, that's probably kind of small for you, but um, there's all kinds of data here for what uh, what's going on with the panel, the, the current state of the panel. This is the, the heartbeat. I don't know if you can see where I'm highlighting. I'm in this blue bar right here. That updates every 30 seconds. So all this data is only 30 seconds old at the most, as long as the, the panel is online. So here's my cycle counts. Remember, we were looking at those on the screen a minute ago on the on the LCD screen on the panel three and two for pump one and pump two. I've got a, if I had a cumulative cumulative running time and an actual pump running, I would see that data here as well. I, I can see a temperature that might come in handy to know what the temperature of the panel is. And I can see other things that are kind of important like a device ID, the uh, IP address, things like that. Now I can also go and see an alert history. So here's my, this could be a raw, a really long running list of various alerts and um, reminders. I've got a device setting. So uh, the ones that are sitting here available right now are uh, some, of, some of the ones we just talked about like seal leak um, or seal fail is what we often call it. What the float configuration, the continuous run timer. So you can do that those kinds of changes here. You can name the device. You can change the location that you have it assigned to. And then this alert settings tab, you've got, these are all the different alarms that a pivot panel can generate. And you can choose right here, email, text, or push notification. You can turn all those things on and off. So moving along, I could silence an alarm just by pushing a button. So if I get a notification that something's an alarm, I don't have to go to the site. I can silence it right here. And then the last thing I'll touch on is if whether I'm the homeowner and I'm owning this in the cloud or I'm a contractor owning this in the cloud, whichever way it is, I can share it to that to that other person or to anybody just by clicking the share button, putting in the username. This would only be for Z, uh, fellow Z Control account users. And since the accounts are free, that's pretty much anybody. So that user that I want to share with is going to get an email that says, hey, you're, you're being shared this Pivot Pro. Click this link if you want to land it in your account. Oh, and if you don't have an account, here's the link to create one. Okay, so that is, um, that's real quickly what it looks like in the cloud. Over here, this is what, the, this is what it looks like when, a, uh, when you're seeing it on the mobile app. That's what the gateway, the, the uh, Velcro and the, uh, cable that comes with it, there's your part number. You want to jot down that part number for the Wi-Fi gateway. There's a resource QR code right here. Uh, I, I'm going to come back to it. I skipped ahead to, to show you this QR code. That's the same QR code that's on the inside of the door. And that gives you a link directly to our resource page for, for Pivot that has all these things on it. And I'll point out, we have the service parts list down here. So as the panels are getting out there, uh, you know, eventually as they age, you're going to need some parts. Your lists are there. I'll also point out this quick quick reference guide. We're going to look at that in just a couple 
slides from now. But all these things are there, technical data sheets, sales sheets, cross-reference sheets. They're all at that QR code. You can also see that QR code on the inside door panel. Just an example of a sales sheet. Front side is Pivot, back side is Pivot Pro. Cross-reference sheet. This one is not updated, so don't bother taking a picture of it or anything. It's FM3295. That's what you want to grab if you're going to want to see that sheet. And on the back side of that is the side-by-side -side comparison. Now, this is kind of cool. This is the uh, first time we've done quick start guides. We call it a quick, quick reference guide, but the Pivot Pro version is two pages long. The Pivot uh, version is one page long. This is the Pivot Pro. So it's it's just nice because it shows you diagrams. Uh, it's got arrows and explainers. And, and then on the back side, you have uh, three different float charts for install, startup, and troubleshoot. You also have an alarm con conditions table there. So that's the front side. That's the back side. I think you guys are going to like that sheet, but and we would love to have feedback on it. That one is 3394. So that concludes uh, what I was going to go over. I really hope you found the information we shared today to be valuable. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback. We, If you enjoy our webinars, um, we want to make sure you know we also offer in-person training and live virtual training sessions at our Zoller University on-campus location, which we call the Center for Excellence. But that is a 6,000 square foot facility. It's got a classroom area for lectures and a demo room for uh, hands-on learning. Our CFE staff can make those courses tailored to whatever it is you're looking for, for, for you or your customers. Um, we also can come to you if you can't come to us. We have our Zoller University on the road product trailer. And that trailer's stocked with all kinds of um, the latest products and demos and swag and, and more than that. So you can reach out to your, to your rep to schedule a visit here or a visit from our trailer. Uh, maybe you wanna have that trailer for a counter day or something. With that, wrap things up. Thanks to everybody for attending and taking the, the time away from your day to join us. Have a great rest of your day.